Martin, you have made, a, you've committed your city to become uh, the first carbon neutral city in the world. That doesn't happen simply by passing a resolution in the city council. What will it take uh, to get to that fantastic goal? Uh, bonjour, c'est avec grand plaisir que je suis présent avec vous ce soir. Um, thank you, Aaron. The City of Adelaide, uh, and I'll, I'll just share the conditions in the City of Adelaide, which has brought us about to be able to make that announcement. We are um, a medium-sized city, 1.3 million, state of South Australia, in a very large landmass, mind you. But we do pride ourselves on being a smart city, and we do pride ourselves on being quite innovative. Um, and we usually coin this phrase in Adelaide called city of firsts. And what that means is over many, many decades, if not generations, we've just socially, culturally, commercially, and now environmentally, I think we just like to do things first. And that may be a function of our size. It might be a function of our collaborative nature. I'm, I'm not sure, but the conditions are good. So, but we also know that we have an economy which is in this profound state of transition. So we, we have an absolute necessity here. Doing nothing or doing the same thing for us is just not, not, uh, not an option at all. So the Adelaide City Council has set an aspiration towards carbon neutrality for 2025. This was done only three weeks ago. The state government of South Australia has come out only last week and has an aspiration for uh, carbon neutrality for the state of South Australia for 2050. In March this year, I signed the Compact of Mayors and I signed that with the Premier of South Australia, Jay Weatherall, when he signed the Compact of States and Regions. And we're already fully compliant under the Compact of Mayors, and there's only 43 cities around the world who are fully compliant at this point in time. But my point there is that I think we're doing vertical integration well between various levels of government. And we're certainly doing it well between capital city government and state government. I think our federal government certainly has a journey to walk. However, the, if we look at our conditions that brought us to that, some 41% of our energy of our grid is already coming from renewables, primarily wind and solar. Uh, that's been achieved in 10 short years. We've seen a 20% reduction since 2007 in greenhouse gas emissions in our city. Uh, meanwhile, we've had 28% GDP growth and we've had 27% residential growth. So. We've decoupled, and when we talk about vertical integration, to be able to work collaboratively with government, but then with business and with property and with industry, when I share that notion that we have decoupled and that we can grow whilst those emissions decline, um, it's a fairly compelling argument. So, And we've done that empirically, and we share that data very, very openly. Last week, we signed a sector agreement with the state government of South Australia, which really provides us with a, a roadmap for the next five years in terms of how we're going to start to achieve or are continue to achieve our aspirations. First of July this year, um, City Council launched what we call a sustainable incentive scheme. So we want, to, we want to leverage off the conditions we've got. So we're now providing financial grants and incentives to commercial ratepayers, to residential ratepayers, to encourage them to adopt battery storage technology because in a city whereby 27% of every residential rooftop has solar PV on it, you've got a naturally captive market for battery storage technology. So the, here, come, here come the entrepreneurs. It's, it's, the, it's the policy signal for the entrepreneurs to come into our market, which we're certainly seeing. But that sustainable incentive scheme also provide, provides incentives for uh, conversion of lights over to LED, uh, electric vehicle charging points, and of course solar PV. So it's multifaceted. And we will oversubscribe in its first year and we'll be in the pleasant position where we need to expand it next year. So our approach has been, uh, Aaron, is a whole of community approach to work collaboratively with our state government, to craft policy with state government, to co-fund incentives with state government, and then to work with industry, to work with the property industry, to work with business, to work with NGOs, to work with the media so that we can manage that conversation with our community, which is absolutely fundamental that we manage that conversation with our community and we take, we take them on the journey. And in some respect, I think South Australians don't need too much of a nudge because it was 40 degrees in Adelaide yesterday. It was the hottest day in, since 1897. Uh, we live in the driest state in the driest continent. 
And I think for us, acting is not a choice. It's an absolute imperative. Thank you very much. And, and uh, I think we all know that um, businesses are not the only ones com who compete in today's world. Cities do too. To what degree uh, does your approach, uh, does it support a competitiveness strategy for inward investment, uh, for the best and the brightest in a knowledge economy? How do those two things link up? Um, the knowledge economy and knowledge workers, entrepreneurs, I mean, they are just absolutely fundamental to this story. We have, working on our own or working with state government or with our universities, we've now got 116 separate programs across Adelaide who are nurturing and supporting and encouraging entrepreneurs of all varieties. So our job is to set the policy, work with industry, uh, help industry. I mean, it's got to be entrepreneurs who unlock the solutions. It's got to be the entrepreneurs who find the gaps. Uh, it won't necessarily be us, but our job is to create the conditions to do it. So we are, from what I've certainly learnt in Paris, uh, quite unique in Australia, whereby we have such a collaborative working relationship with our state government with regards to climate, uh, energy efficiency, clean energy, um, cost reduction, uh, productivity, uh, ecotourism, all these things which might seem a little bit disparate, but they're, they're very interconnected. It's very much very much the same story. So um, it's policy and it's collaboration, which is where we're seeing the difference. So one that's come in here, and this is for our two mayors, um, and I'll paraphrase the question that's come in. Thank you, Sir David. Um, uh, is how do you, as mayors of cities, navigate uh, the policies uh, from your national government, Sir David's conveniently leaving as I'm about to ask about national government policy. Um, national government policy on climate change, which in Australia quite clearly has gone through a series of U-turns over the past several years, and in the UK something similar uh, perceived by many more recently. So how do you, how do you uh, deal with that? Adelaide and South Australia, uh, Aaron, a very interesting example of that. Um, but at a local government level, at a capital city council level, um, I think we have an incumbency of leadership. We can do that through policy, we can do that through incentives, and we can do that by being an early adopter ourselves. So uh, we will soon have our own business operations, and they're relatively substantial. They will be carbon neutral. We will use everything we've got at our disposal as a level of government to showcase that to the community uh, in order to espouse the benefits of what we're doing, to encourage them to do it. Also, like aforementioned, <coughs> is engaging with entrepreneurs. Um, like Horace said, the entrepreneurs know, know where the customers are. They know where the customers are and they know where the demand is. So we're working across a very wide field of entrepreneurs across various sectors to basically enable them to get into this business of sustainability and find opportunities in it. So. And it's true. Uh, we And collaborating with our uh, state or our provincial governments is absolutely fundamental uh, for us to succeed. Uh, we've done this all in an environment where, without putting too fine a point on it, the federal government's been asleep at the wheel. So we hope that's going to change. We suggest it may. We, we're optimists. Um, but by working with our state governments, working with our communities, especially our entrepreneurs uh, of all sizes, whether they're corporate entrepreneurs or startups or everything in between, um, that's how we've managed to get the results we've got. We did have a visionary state government uh, some decade ago who, through legislation, really got this uh, and through incentives, uh, really got the renewables up from a cold start up to 41% in 2015. And that's quite an extraordinary journey for a state to do that. But we have an abundance of wind and we have an abundance of solar. So even if Canberra is not acting, state government is? I think it's a, it's a bottom-up leadership approach, to be honest. I, I, I think that uh, Mayor Ferguson would relate to this entirely, is that we can lead at a city level. The cities are 80% of the emissions. Cities are also 80% of GDP. So if we're leading from a city level, I think it actually now the momentum is going back up the other way. So, and I think that's it's going to put us in a more sustainable place.